Ryan Marciniak has been watching events closely. He's an astronomer with the Ontario Science Centre and he joins us now in studio. Uh, Ryan, what is your reaction to the explosion? Well, I was watching it live and I was just shocked when I saw it. The uh, SpaceX has had 18 successful launches with this rocket in a row. So for it to fail, yeah. it was a surprise to everybody, everyone who was watching, everybody who was live tweeting the event. Uh, it's, we're all shocked right now. And what do you think went wrong? Well, it happened about two minutes into the flight. Uh, it was an altitude of about 45 kilometers, and that's right when the first stage separates. That's the first rocket that's taking it up into space. It separates from the rest of the capsule. And something had happened where it didn't separate properly, and then we saw the whole rocket explode in a matter of about three seconds. Mm -hmm. When you say the shock of it all, can you describe mm -hmm. that to me when you were watching it? Yeah, I mean, w when you look at, at something like this, it's carrying, you know, 5,000 pounds of cargo, of science experiments, work that people have put in, supplies, clothing, all these things that are going up to the astronauts who are uh, isolated above the International Space Station. And so to see it all lost and, and the hard work of these people, these scientists, these engineers, to put all this together and have it be completely destroyed is, is really sad. So how big of a setback is this then? It's the second big setback that, that's happened uh, for International Space Station supply missions in the last couple of months. The Russian Progress uh, spacecraft had a, a similar issue uh, launching. So it, it's a big set, uh, setback for supply missions to the ISS in general, and especially for SpaceX, who eventually wants to launch manned flights right. up to the ISS. So uh, in fact, one of the things they were gonna send up with this mission was a, a special docking port that was going to attach to the International Space Station okay. and eventually make it easier for manned, uh, manned vehicles to attach. So are they in danger of running out of essential supplies? Not at all. The International Space Station, uh, the international space community, uh, this is all taken care of. There's a, a number of different resupply missions that are, are constantly uh, on schedule to fly up to the ISS. In fact, I believe the next one is this Friday. So they still have supplies. They have plenty of, of things available to them for months and months on end. So we're not worried about that. It's just a major setback for the organizations involved in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of money and investment in this. So what's next for SpaceX? would you say? Well, the first thing is to identify what went wrong. Uh, that's what, what is on everybody's mind right now. We're all questioning what happened, why did it happen, how can we prevent this from happening again? So that's going to be SpaceX's uh, first priority. After that, they still have a contract with uh, NASA for six more missions. So ideally, we're going to see the next mission launch a few months from now, mm -hmm. but that's presuming they get everything worked out, they figure out what went wrong, and they figure out how to, uh, how to fix it for the next time. I can imagine it would take some time to figure all that out. It's like troubleshooting and you're not sure yeah. what went wrong. It's true. We, we, they have uh, special teams. NASA has special teams uh, who come in and assess the entire situation. The control room gets plenty of data from the craft. Mm -hmm. And so once they take a look at that data and figure out what exactly went wrong, they'll be able to determine some steps for the next launch. Okay. Thanks for the breakdown, Ryan. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Ryan Marciniak is an astro astronomer with the Ontario Science Centre.